This is my unassembled shop space. If you follow my channel, then you know I just moved from Raleigh, North Carolina to Greensboro, North Carolina, and I'm gonna slowly convert this into my shop studio space. And the first thing that has to happen is that I get up this old carpet. This carpet has been down for, who knows, 30 years or more. It's full of dust, and it's glued down to the concrete slab beneath it. Concrete slab really makes for the best shop floor. I've gotta get it out so that I don't have to worry about it collecting more dust as I'm in here cutting with saws and creating sawdust all the time. This isn't something that I do very often, so I'm happy to hear from any experts, any flooring experts, especially people who remove a lot of flooring. Let me know how you would do things differently down in the comments below. I'm gonna take it little by little. I am gonna get it up and it may be a two day process. And on the topic of safety, I will be using respirators and masks the entire time I'm doing this because there is so much collected dust in the carpet. It's all gonna get released in the air when I start pulling this up. And then when I'm scraping that glued on adhesive, it's gonna release like dust as well. If you're doing anything like this, you definitely want to get decent respirators, probably something like this. I went out and grabbed this Honeywell as backup just in case. Don't do this without protecting your lungs. You really should be thinking about it all the time, especially if you're working in any area that's gonna be really dusty, and this is gonna get very dusty. It's also a good idea to wear gloves while you're doing this. Carpet is really rough and it can have staples and sharp debris in it, so put gloves on before you start working. This spot near the door came right up, but it was the last place that would be this easy. I couldn't believe how tightly the rest of the carpet was still fastened. Pretty much right away, this project turned into a fight. If you were curious, glued down flooring removal is not glamorous. It's mostly brute force, it's crazy tiring, and you have to fight for inches. And as I said, just look at all the dust. You really want to cut the carpet into squares with a sharp utility knife. But don't slash yourself. Utility knives cause more injuries than any other tool, so be careful if you use them. Also, they dull out real fast, so you have to change blades often. When you get a line scored with a knife, though, you can get a little more leverage and less surface area working against you. So long runs will finally come up as a strip, which is relieving. But the rest of the room was not going to be that easy. I used a blade scraper at first, but even that wasn't up to the task. This glue was just so strong, even after all these years. I had to switch over to a three-foot wrecking bar for leverage, which worked, but not as efficiently as I might have hoped. In the end, if you can work a piece from two sides, sawing back and forth, you'll get better results. And two people can obviously make this a lot easier. But I pretty much always work alone, so that wasn't an option here. Halfway through, I finally broke down and went and got a hard scraper. This thicker, stiffer blade is really helpful. It's somewhat sharp, but can still take a lot of force without dulling. And this makes it perfect for starting edges. You just hit forward with a swiping, stabbing motion. It'll even lift the toughest spots. This is like shoveling sand though. It's just brutal, backbreaking labor. Also, it may separate the carpet from the mesh, but there's no way around that. So with the combination of all these approaches, I finally began to work my way around the room. Kicking also helped, but if you have knee or hip problems, don't do it. It's hard on your joints, I probably shouldn't have done it after a knee surgery, but it did speed things up a little. I cut long runs freehand when they were already off the slab, then rolled them up and carried them outside. Eventually everything but some mesh was fully removed. At that point I tried dry scraping the floor, which sometimes works, but this glue was still too tacky. Some spots wouldn't come up at all, and I knew it wasn't a good final approach. I'd have to save the razor scraper for another time. In the end, I used some low VOC adhesive remover to get most of the glue off the floor. I'm not going to cover this in detail because I'm not a pro at it, and you can get yourself into trouble using these solvents. They're strong chemicals, and they can be dangerous to use. You should really only use them with supervision. I'll try to work with a flooring company later to cover this topic. I'll say, though, that it makes a terrible mess, and it's just as grueling as the carpet removal. This 14-inch scraper wound up being the best tool, in my opinion, for this job. It skimmed the high areas down, cut through the caked up grime, and moved more surface area at once, which is important in a room of this size. So after a crazy amount of scraping and sweeping, and some floor dusting to cut down on the residue, I had the room cleared to my approval. There were like three layers of mastic, paint, and glue down on this floor, so I didn't even try to get it all. It looks piebald in the end, but I don't mind. It's just shop space, not a client's house. So it's good enough to work on, and I can get busy with other tasks now. So that's it for this week, everybody. I'll link a handful of these tools down below, if I can find them, as well as some other videos on the topic. 
Thanks for watching. The shop will be coming together in the weeks ahead, so please keep checking back to see how it goes. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.